All right, here we are again, and I want to recount the tale of a tips placement one more time. Uh, last tips that I can think that I did, I actually did out in LA. I uh, made the video on it, um, and now I just did one in my hometown, Athens, Pennsylvania. I got notified there's a patient in the ICU basically throwing up blood. Um, now, I, I think a lot of people don't know what that means, but to me, I kind of almost immediately know what that means. And that is just a testament of the training, uh, training at Emory, seeing chronic liver disease, seeing chronic liver disease day in, day out for months. And uh, when someone says, uh, threw, up, threw up a gallon of blood, I know exactly what that means. It means variceal bleeding, and it means it's, uh, it's, it's a life-threatening situation now, it's a life-threatening situation going forward. Because once you start throwing up buckets of blood, uh, there's, not a, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, one thing you, you have to do is consider if this can be managed endoscopically. Um, there's reasons often why it cannot be, but that's, that's kind of the first step. So uh, I walked over to the ICU, I was able to chat with the gastroenterology team. There's a attending and a fellow, and basically talked about how this patient was actually transferred from outside hospital. I uh, had an EGD done there. And uh, you know, long story short, basically, they did not feel they could treat these varices endoscopically due to the location, uh, due to the type of bleeding. Um, they did not feel they could get control of this uh, endoscopically. And you know, the way I think about it pathophysiologically, it's really, it's really simple. There's really nothing to think about. These varices are fed by the portal vein, and the portal vein is obstructed due to chronic liver disease. So you've got pressurized abnormal veins that are bleeding. We know they're bleeding because when the patient tells you they threw up a bucket of blood, you know, that's, that's what's going on. Um, the only option you really have is you have to acutely, you have to decrease the portal pressure. And then the thing that you can do that with is tips. You know, the only thing in the short term that you can effectively decrease the portal pressure um, is tips. And that's the only way you can really affect this person's mortality. Their mortality is high right now. This mor their mortality is high going forward. And, and really even post tips, their mortality is high, but it's, it's going to be reduced from whatever it is now because you have reduced the portal pressure. So that's kind of where the tips comes into play. Um, so I went to the patient, I talked to him, um, you know, one, you can, you can beat around the bush a lot in medicine. You have to be a politician a lot in medicine, but one place you don't have to be a politician is when you're having a frank discussion with a patient. And I told the patient, you know, risks of the procedure, death, heart attack, stroke, stroke. Um, I had an attending show me that in residency, you know, he said, just tell them that straight up, you know, when you're worried about a patient, you're worried about, or you know, a procedure could, could harm a patient. Just tell them straight up, you could die from this, you know? And um, it, it protects you, it protects the patient. It manages the expectations. I told him basically just what I said is that he's got severe variceal bleeding. He could die from this. This is the one way to manage it is to decrease the portal pressure with the tips. Um, sign the paperwork, it was a done deal. So uh, move over into the, the IR suite. I'm working alongside, alongside Tyler. Uh, it's an amazing relationship. This is somebody I went to high school with, you know? So we're working together, you know, side by side. He graduated a year before me, and we're working together to uh, save this man's life. Um, I basically actually watched my last tips video before I jumped into this this tips, because I was trying to remind myself exactly what to do, how to do a tips, because it's often a lot of time in between. Um, he got set up, you know, got into the hepatic vein real easy, right hepatic vein, we're in that real easy. You know, got the sheath down, got the cannula down, started making passes. Um, this is when I realized that, uh, you know, I think when you're early on, you think that, you know, you're good or something. You think you're well-trained. And with experience, you know, I've got about three years experience now, you realize that you've really just been lucky. And uh, I realized after several passes that weren't getting in the portal vein that I had just been lucky. And this was a tip, I, I really had to work for this, I really had to work for this. And um, you know, it's better when you have to work hard to get something you want, because um, you know what it's worth, you know? There's people that get stuff real easy or get stuff handed to them. Um, I don't want that. I'd rather work hard for mine, because you know, when you work hard for something, you know what it's worth, you know what it takes to get it. 
and you can do it again and again. If you if you learn how to work hard like that, you can do it again and again. So anyways, I was working hard for this tips. Um, we were working hard. I was making a lot of passes. And I knew I was very close to the portal vein. I could just feel it. And then eventually I could just see it. Um, all these passes uh, were actually going not into the lumen of the portal vein. They're going uh, periportal. I was leaving a lot of periportal contrast. And basically, eventually, I was looking on the screen. I could see a negative impression on the portal vein. I could see the portal vein. Um, I could see exactly where it was. Uh, problem is, the needle was skating off the portal and getting into the periportal space rather than getting right into the lumen of the portal vein where I wanted it. Um, but, you know, it's just one of these things. You know, with time and persistence, finally, finally, you know, I was, I was literally bouncing the cannula off the, the portal vein, the main portal vein, the kind of the crotch of it. And then finally, uh, my needle pass went right into it. I could feel a little pop with the needle. I was really noticing the sensations through that needle. Um, and I, I sort of felt a pop that felt good. You know, pulled out the uh, the needle. We had the little blue catheter. Um, you know, got shot some contrast in there. It was pretty messy, so it was hard to see what was going on, but I, was, I felt kind of good about it. Uh, put the wire down, and that wire feel, when you're inside the lumen of a vessel, the way the wire just floats, um, that's really something to understand as an interventionalist. And I could feel the wire just float down into the portal, you know, no resistance, and it was just going down, it went down into the SMV, and I knew right then and there that we were in. So, you know, working with Tyler, we, we walked off the other catheter, we got down a little four French uh, 100 um, glide cath, which you need to have on the table, and uh, he did an angio, and I could see the portal vein filling beautifully. So uh, right then and there, we just kind of finished up the case, got the uh, Lunderquist wire, uh, wire down there, got a nice stable wire access, uh, got our sheath down into the portal vein, and pretty much from there, it's, it's pretty much a done deal. It wasn't too many uh, problems after that. Did have a little issue uh, getting the stent uh, to go down the sheath. Uh, I was able to fix that. We worked together to get that done. Um, deployed the stent, uh, ballooned it up to 10, did a little post-angio. Uh, it was really nice to see the varices no longer filling. Now it's all decompressing via the tips into the right atrium. And right there we had completed that um, that tips placement. We had decreased that man's portal pressures and kind of improved his uh, short-term and long-term uh, mortality, uh, risk for dying from varices. So it was it was really satisfying. Um, I said I had to work for this one, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about anatomy. I learned a lot about kind of you know what, where are you when you're when you're in the hepatic and when you're when you're trying to get into the portal, what what type of relationships are you are you looking at? And I sort of learned that. I, I was actually rotating the tube a lot back and forth and just really understanding, you know, when I'm pointing my cannula in there, you know, where is it where. Um, you, you can take your trajectory from being like a like a 20% chance of sticking the portal to like a 80% chance of sticking the portal just from, you know, pulling back on the cannula and, and pointing it the right direction. And literally, I was able to bounce the cannula off of the, the portal bifurcation. And that's kind of, when you can do that, then you know you're close. You know you're very close. So I was able to get to that point. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I felt great, you know, felt really good. A little bit of a long case, I think it was at least three hours, you know, 45 minutes of floral. Uh, definitely, definitely a, a long case and, and a late case, you know, kind of went to about 10 or 11 o'clock. But it was successful. Uh, patient did well in the short term, went to the ICU. And uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see. I, I tried to reach out to family, I couldn't find any. I uh, reached out to the resident taking care of the patient, let, let her know. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, tips placement, always, it's always a special thing. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the more, it's really one of the most complex interventions we do. And uh, it doesn't come up all that often. But when it does come up, uh, it's something you want to be able to, to offer. And uh, yeah, so uh, today I'll catch up uh, some other cases on call. But potential rectal bleed that I'm going to see how that patient's doing. And uh See about that. So, all right, guys. Sroga Take care.